Okay, so I just saw this movie called Rip, a remix manifesto. And it goes like this. Culture always builds on the past. But the past will always try to control the future. Our future is becoming less free. And to build free societies, we need to limit the control of the past. These are words spoken straight to my heart. I mean, this this manifesto doesn't just apply to copyrights and music. It's all-encompassing. And I think it's a wonderfully concise explanation of some of the symptoms of our current cultural zeitgeist. I don't think creativity is something someone has. I think it is something someone does. Something someone does, does, does. And nobody can create something from nothing. Nirvana's heavily, heavily influential. First punk band I got into was Green Day. I'm only 20 years old, so I was never into anything like real old school until like I learned about what where the music came from and then got into like minor threat. Every, every, every thought we have comes from the outside world. Creativity it is your unique, your unique expression of those ideas. The manifesto said culture always builds on the past. past. Now I'm going to try to show how these things apply to a lot more than just entertainment. Here, here, here in California's Silicon Valley, this new robot is learning to do housework. Now Berger and Wyrobeck are about to give away 10 copies of their robot to researchers. We're providing them as a development platform to the people that we think are going to take the best use of them and make the results of what they're doing open source to share with the rest of the community. Because we really want to see what happens when you have a large community of people building on top of each other's work with a shared platform. And there's going to be one key message I'd like to share with you that's very explosive growth. The price performance, the capacity, the bandwidth of information technology doubles every year. That's multiplying by a thousand in ten years, a billion in thirty years, by a thousand in ten years, a billion in thirty years. Why such exponential growth? We use the latest generation of technology to evolve the next generation. And that's the same way, I mean, with samples, I just sample things all day long, and then I see what works, and, you know, doing science, when you're looking at the ideas, you just read journals, take notes, that's just, you know, collecting the data. To look into a million different things to make something new. Um, you know, the first thing you do is research it and see if there's patents for it. And a lot of times, very broad ideas are patented. And um, I think if it were a bit more open to the point where the whole point of medicine and science were, let's just do the best we can, let's just build on all the ideas and uh, see what we can make happen, I think the progress of medicine would be you know, incredibly fast. Most people get their beliefs and their ideals instilled in them from their childhood. This is an absolute fact. I mean, if I grew up in India, I'd probably be Hindu. If I grew up in Ireland, I'd probably be Catholic. If I grew up in Detroit, I'd probably be a Red Wings fan. But I didn't. I grew up in San Jose. And sure enough, I love the Sharks. But it doesn't end in sports or religion. It goes on with everything, and I mean everything. By the time people reach their adulthood, they pretty much have it implanted in their head what the opposition looks like to every argument they have. The Patriot Act is an act to deter and punish terrorist acts in the United States and around the world, to enhance law enforcement investigatory tools and for other purposes. Other purposes? What the fuck is that all about? Other purposes. You shouldn't even allow that kind of loose language in a fucking gym membership contract. You will remember CTV News was first to report a movie studio on Eastern Avenue will be used as a holding center. Holding center. Movie studio will be used as a holding holding center for any protesters arrested during the summit. And there will also be many more eyes on the downtown core during the G20 summit. Toronto police have hired a local camera company to install extra high, high, high resolution cameras. They won't tell us how many, won't tell us how many or their exact location, location, but it's safe, but it's safe, but it's safe to say they will be near the Metro Convention Center. The emergent nature of reality is that all systems, whether it is knowledge, society, technology, philosophy, or any other creation, will, when uninhibited, undergo fluid, perpetual change. What we consider commonplace today, such as modern communication and transportation, would have been unimaginable in ancient times. Likewise, the future will contain technologies, realizations, and social structures that we cannot even fathom in the present. 
And it is this awareness that aligns us and leads us on a continuous path to growth and progress. Static, empirical knowledge does not exist. Rather, it is the insight of the emergence of all systems we must recognize. This means we must be open to new information at all times, even if it threatens our current belief system and hence identities. Sadly, society today has failed to recognize this and the established institutions continue to paralyze growth by preserving outdated social structures. Simultaneously, the population suffers from a fear of change, for their conditioning assumes a static identity and challenging one's belief system usually results in insult and apprehension. And this tendency to blindly hold on to a belief system, sheltering it from new, possibly transforming information, is nothing less than a form of intellectual materialism. The monetary system perpetuates this materialism not only by its self-preserving structures, but also through the countless number of people who have been conditioned into blindly and thoughtlessly upholding these structures, therefore becoming self-appointed guardians of the status quo. Sheep, which no longer need a sheepdog to control them, for they control each other by ostracizing those who step out of the norm. This tendency to resist change and uphold existing institutions for the sake of identity, comfort, power and profit is completely unsustainable and will only produce further imbalance, fragmentation, distortion and invariably destruction. It's time to change. Wilhelm von Humboldt believed that the state tends to make man an, an, an instrument, instrument to serve its arbitrary ends. It, it, it follows that the state is a profoundly anti-human anti institution. Bakunin said, I mean the only liberty which is truly, truly worthy of the name. The liberty which recognizes no other, restriction, no other restriction than those which are traced for us by the laws of our own nature. So that properly speaking, there are no restrictions. There are two social principles that limit liberty. Power and hierarchy. Pow power and hierarchy. To have a hierarchy implies power flows from the top down. Control, 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 and domination is exercised through the use of violent or non-violent coercion. All systems of power are prone to abuse. As Bakunin said, the action of social tyranny, social, social tyranny, is gentler, more insidious, but no less powerful and pervasive than is the authority of the state. It dominates men by customs, by the mass of prejudices, by the habits of daily life. It overwhelms the individual from birth. It permeates every facet of life. When you leave pockets of power, there's a natural tendency for these power systems to create mass, mass, mass associations to amplify their authority to control, influence, and rule over individuals. In the end, you have a few who ultimately decide the fate of the majority. They have the ability to influence the media through think tanks, front groups. They can buy off politicians. They have the ability to influence the media. Media. They can buy off politicians through contributions, push, push, push legislation, and shape people's personal preferences through the use of advertising and public relations. We seek new social norms that fight against anything that limits liberty, including patriarchy, homophobia, inequality, racism, and religious dogma. To quote Rudolf Rocker. Liberties do not exist because they have been set down on a piece of paper, but only when they have become the ingrown habits of a people. This would help develop all the faculties and powers of every human being by education, by scientific training, and by material prosperity. A left, a left, a left libertarian, by their very nature, are in a visceral revolt against anything that hinders liberty. They look for it in all aspects of life, in the family, in religion, in the state, in personal relationships, within themselves. Only in freedom would human dignity of the individual consist precisely in this, that he does because he is not forced to do so, not forced, not forced, not forced to do so, but because he freely conceives it, wants it, and loves it. That is, total freedom, total freedom, total freedom. So embrace the future, the past, remixed, and respect the pace of change and the race. Don't get left behind while respected old structures crumble. I expect to find new adventures. Lost and confused, maybe, but infused with the emergent, I am able to be certain that everything not only needs to change, but that everything feeds on change. So even if I wanted, I couldn't stop it. Not that I thought that. I never bought that notion from my teachers and preachers that we've somehow arrived at a truth that is static. But today, out from the attic and armed with the arsenal of our history, I call for solutions. Some might say it's evolution, but what we are experiencing is a revolution.